Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here today with Tambry Harris. Tambry is a leadership and life coach, survivor of childhood sexual abuse, and founder of Going Forward, Survivors to Thrivers, an organization that provides individual guidance, retreats, speaking engagements to bring awareness and light into the shame, silence, and darkness that surrounds sexual abuse. Tambry has a master's degree in applied psychology and certifications in leadership coaching, spiritual direction, diversity, and change management. After spending 16 years in corporate America, Tambry created her own coaching practice to help individuals enhance their effectiveness and claim lives of significance. Through her book, Awakening the Light, she shares her inspiring journey of moving from survivor to thriver and creating the going forward movement. Her dream is that survivors of sexual abuse will no longer be trapped by fear and limitations from their old stories and can claim wholehearted, life-giving, going-forward stories. You can learn more about Tambry and all of her work at SurvivorsToThrivers.com. So Tambry, um, so wonderful to have you here with us. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks so much. It's great to be here. So anyone that's watching, you know, feel free to ask questions um, either through raising your hand um, through the Zoom portal or typing it into the chat box. Um, I'll go ahead and, and, and ask uh, Tambry a few questions. Um, maybe, if you don't mind, you could tell people more about your background than kind of what I briefly touched on. Okay, sure, sure. And I'll, you know, I think one thing to kind of just know who we are at, at our essence, at our core and I don't have many memories as a child, but I remember being in first grade on a playground where they, um, <clears throat> the kids took this child's wig off and were throwing it around the playground and my heart just hurting and my heart wondering why didn't the adult step in? Why wasn't anybody coming to his aid? And that heart to help has been with me throughout my, my life and my career. And so when I was in my undergrad studies, I found um, psychology and I absolutely fell in love with it and ended up getting my master's in that. Um, and my master's was applied psychology and my intention was to really help corporations create a culture that is positive, that is um, supportive of employees. And I spent, um, about 20 years doing that, um, working whether it be at an organizational level, at a team level, at an individual level, really trying to help organizations create positive cultures. I broke out and started doing my own work about 15 years ago. And that was really focused. I, I really enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with individuals. And that was more in the, the area of, of leadership coaching um, and kind of morphed into some life coaching I ended up getting my spiritual direction uh, certification to really kind of be able to hold the whole of a person. And so really back to the mind, body, spirit as they look at trying to create, you know, very fulfilling lives. So that was my path until about four years ago when it was put on my heart to do more work to help um, survivors of sexual abuse. And as a survivor myself, I can speak to the pain. I can speak to the limiting beliefs that come. I can speak to the patterns, the unhealthy patterns, because for me, the sense of unworthiness that came from the sexual abuse led me into um, domestically violent situations. I married two abusers. Um, and it was because I had not done my work. And so my hope is that this organization can really help people, A, recognize when they're in and and so a lot of my work it, it, it's kind of it started with sexual abuse but really abuse and trauma survivors to recognize the limiting beliefs that may be keeping them stuck and so the organization is there to help encourage people as well as to um, give them specific steps they can use to to grow and and heal from from that and really claim a fully lived well, you know, I should have mentioned, you know, the introduction that um, Tambry is contributing to our new book, uh, the second volume of How to Heal Our Divides. And the reason is because, you know, when I met Tambry and heard her story and heard about, you know, her organization, I just said, oh, my gosh, you know, this fits into this model of healing a variety of different types of divides. Um, so tell folks a little bit more about what Survivors to Thrivers does, what kinds of, you know, activities, programs, et cetera. 
You know, Brian, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because it, it truly part of my hope. It's um, I am a person of faith. And when when I say it was put on my heart, um, I had been really unsettled by the Me Too movement and I didn't know what the unsettled was. Um, and so I actually I sat in prayer around that. And it, what came to me was that um People might say, okay, they raise their hand and say, me too, but then the hand goes down and you go back into your life and and you just continue in this this squelched silence place. And so what I really want to do is give voice to a topic that so many people don't want to talk about. And so when you and I spoke about, you know, being a part of healing our divides, I thought about the fact that there's two different divides. There's the divide that exists between society and the individual, because we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it as a family. We don't want to talk about it as friends. And so it ends up silencing the victims and they stay in this hurt wounded place. And so being able to get the conversation to a place where it doesn't stay in the dark is huge. And so, um, and I actually had somebody who I um, I actually was a youth counselor for her years and years ago, and she's still at my church, and she sent me a Facebook message, and she said, Tambry, you know, thank you for, and she said, I don't know if this is the right word or not, but for normalizing hmm. this topic. And, I, and, you know, and I don't know if it's the right word, but it's a good word, because if we can begin to have a norm where we can talk about this topic, then, and if, if people can see me be willing to talk about it and engage around it, then maybe they can engage their loved one or um, around the topic. And so part of it is, again, creating awareness, raising awareness. And so, you know, the speaking engagements I do is often to to raise awareness around the topics so we're not afraid. Um, and then the other divide is within the person, because what happens is our bodies are no longer safe. Um, we have been hurt and wounded, and so we live in our heads. And, you know, I often will use the, the waterline analogy of you know, you look fine from here up, but below the waterline is a hot mess. <laughs> you know, we've got all this stuff where we're squelching. And so what I really want to do is help survivors be able to begin to recognize, to, to be their whole person, to recognize that they need to claim their whole self, their bodies, their spirits, their emotions, their and versus just living in their heads, which I did for 35 years until a panic attack woke me up to my truth. And then I did all did my healing work to then be able to be a resource around this. So I would say as an organization, we are trying to A, be encouragers, B, you know, encourage the conversation, encourage healing, and then also really to help guide other survivors of, of trauma to, to have the courage um and so to have the courage to to take the steps and give specific steps and guidance around that mm -hmm. now um, as you know this is a writer's conference yes. and so we need to talk about your book <laughs> yes um, thank you awakening the light a survivors to thrivers going forward story so how did that book come about yeah so it was really interesting it feels like it's the culmination of all the different parts of me um, as I mentioned, I've been speaking, and as I was speaking on the topic, I learned that by sharing my story and being vulnerable around my story, it really encouraged others to be vulnerable as well. And, and so that was so I, I really was crafting my story and my book. Um, without knowing it, um, because I kept, you know, adding to my story and gaining confidence in my story as I was sharing it. And then I also was doing one-on-one -on -one and, and uh, retreats to help individuals do this healing work and, again, taking them through some steps of that. And so with the book, and it was really interesting, uh, someone asked me to co-write a book. And so I don't know, because I never really... I wasn't one of those people that, you know, woke up and said, okay, I'm going to write a book, or that was always a burning desire in my heart. And so I really think I needed the nudge from this other person to say, hey, let's write a book. And so, and he has a different story, but a, a sense woundedness, working through the woundedness, working through the limiting beliefs. And so I thought, okay, this could be really cool because you've got a female voice and a male voice on this topic, and that could be really interesting. 
So I wrote my part and then he ended up having other things that kind of got him distracted. And, and then I had to make the choice and I thought, you know what, maybe I just needed him to give me the courage to do it. <laughs> and so when he pulled away, I went forward and it ended up being really beautiful because it was my pure voice and it was, it allowed me to really speak and, and, and really highlight it became, it was more my organization versus just my story. And so I believe it was meant to be the way it came out, but it was, it was kind of an interesting little bit of securitist path on how it Yeah, yeah. It well, <laughs> I mean, every single person I talk to in terms of, you know, the first book in particular has got a, a completely unique story of how in the world it happened. So, uh, you know, don't feel bad that it was a little circuitous or, you know, unexpected because it seems like that's the case a large percentage of the time. Um, and it turned out great. I mean, it's it's a wonderful book. And, uh, you know, you're doing wonderful work beyond just a book. So, but um, I, I don't remember now, did you self-publish it or was it traditionally published or hybrid published? Thank you. That's a great question. And, and to be honest, I got... Um, because of this person I was going to partner with, he had written a book before and he had self-published. And so I kind of learned vicariously from that. And so he was working with, going to work with a hybrid publisher. And so that's what we did or what I did. Okay. Um, and so, you know, so I had, like I said, kind of written what I thought, you know, and, and then when I engaged this, this hybrid publisher, they gave me some good structure to really use to map out. So I'd already kind of captured some of my thoughts, but they gave me some structure to help and then um, went through a lot of the process around, um, you know, make, get, making it happen and, and bringing um, tools and resources to bear. So that was very, very valuable to me. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> what would you say would be like the one thing you'd like people to take away from the book? Mm, you know, for me, a lot of us who have been in, in trauma, um, experienced trauma or abuse, or have someone, because I've also been told that people who have loved ones that fall in that category, the book is helpful for them to see into the, what it's like to live through this. And, and we walk away feeling like we're not worthy. And, and so I think one of the big pieces is knowing that you are worthy of a bigger life, a, a more whole life. You don't have to be stuck with the, these limiting beliefs and feeling like you're constantly striving. And, and that's why with my title, you know, I said Awakening the Light because we've got this light within us. It's just, it's almost like a pilot light sometimes and it's, it's still there, but it might be dimmed. And so recognizing that there is this light and it can go bright. We just have to fuel it and really encourage it and nurture it. And then, and the concept of you know, survivors to thrivers going forward story. You know, we, a lot of us are stuck in survivor mode and we may not even realize it. Like I said, when I was 35, the things looked fine on the surface. Um, but then when I really got quiet and still and looked at it, there were so many things that were um, not the best use of me. And so to really know that there can be this thriving life and this next chapter, this going forward story for you. That's what I would really want people to mm. do. Very cool. Very cool. So um, for new writers, you know, that have yet to publish their first book, uh, now that you've done it, what advice would you offer? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. I, um, I've i always been one to journal. And so that the fact that I had that as a practice was helpful. I actually think about the fact that um, it's probably been 20 years ago when Julia Cameron co coined the term morning pages and, and the encouragement for writers just to write, to not, you know, to try and just get your thoughts out there and begin to get in the flow. And so I would encourage writers, even if you feel a little bit stuck around something, just encourage yourself to write and, and flow. And, and then you can go back and glean the nuggets out of that. I also found that I would find inspiration would come at different times for me. And so sometimes I would be on a walk and I would want to capture these thoughts. And I learned to, um, there's a notes app on your phone. And so I would literally just get the notes app and just start talking and capture, mm -hmm. you know, capture those thoughts. Because sometimes 
you know, that's, that's getting, that can be pure gold, right? You know, and so it's like, oh, and then you can go blow, you know, expand it later. Um, and Brian, I don't know if, if you would encourage this or not, but, you know, sometimes for me, when my mind is going, I just need to, to go with it. And so there would be times at night where, you know, I couldn't sleep because that, that, that piece was still, you know, kind of churning in my mind. And so I would just get up, go capture that, kind of release it. And then that would, that would free me up to be able to go back to sleep. So I, I guess for me, it's about, you know, inspiration, um, you know, being able to, to take advantage of when you are feeling inspired and, and, and finding tools that help you capture and you know, do that when, when that's you know, happening for you. So one of the things that we've been talking about a lot throughout this conference and throughout the history of writing for your life is marketing and platform. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what the tools that you've been um, using, um, particularly the ones that you found to be most successful from mm -hmm. a marketing perspective to get the word out about the book mm -hmm. and the organization? Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, to fund the production of my book, I actually did a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. We talked about that um, earlier this week. I did yes. you? Okay, yeah. good, good. And so um, I think that what I, it ended up not being, um, let me see, what it did was it allowed the people who I know in my network to join me. I did not have very many people outside of my network contribute to my Kickstarter campaign, but it gave me a, a place for people to go. And it also, of course, um, creates the opportunity or forces you to really, you know, kind of come up with your pitch and, and to think about you know, what's the essence that I want to, to offer for people? And so, um, but it, it was cool because I did have a couple people from, you know, throughout the U.S. and I had somebody from, um, you know, Switzerland. And so it was kind of fun to think about my book because one of the things that you do with your, with your Kickstarter campaign is you think about what are the things you do for the different levels of contribution. And so, you know, one of them was a signed author copy of the book. And so to think about my book being, even in its launch, being in these different places was really fun, you know, so that was cool. And then because, and with that, I then knew who my inherent supporters were because I did really reach out to much of my network around that. And so, you know, when I did my launch party, that was who I, um, who I tapped into for my launch party, you know, to kind of bring them in for that. Um, I also... My, my book talks a lot about mind, body, spirit. And so when I was, um, you know, kind of doing some of the, trying to get the, the reviews and, and that type of thing, I went to, you know, therapists for the mind. Mm -hmm. I went to doctors for the body. I went to faith leaders for the spirit. And I had them read the book and I had them write reviews. And so... Mm -hmm. You know, part of my goal was to really represent, and it gave me confidence, you know, that this, I know what I'm talking about, you know, this is a helpful resource. And so I, um, so I got these different, you know, kind of uh, disciplines to support me. And I actually, after my initial launch, I then had a launch for people of those different um, disciplines to, to come together. And I had, um two people from each discipline speak on another kind of Zoom launch about, about the book and its value because I would really love to think that practitioners are using it and not just individuals. And so, um, so that was another way that I tried to, you know, get, um, be more inclusive in, in how I reached out to, how I reached out to people. Hmm, cool. <clears throat> so I know like we first, I think, the place we first met was at Wild Goose. Festival. It was, it was. And, and you, you had a table there for yes. survivors to survivors, and you yes. also spoke at at yes. least one of the different uh, sessions. So um, have you found those types of events to be helpful to build momentum and get the word out? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so I do, um, and, you know, as you know, speaking has been a little more challenging with, um, with COVID, and so I haven't had as many um, but I do, and, and, you know, and again, it's about, yeah, raising awareness around, around the book and, and your particular passion and, and cause. Um, I don't know if your, most of your um, individuals are, are fiction or nonfiction, but 
you know, really trying to encourage people to um, support, you know, what your what your message is and that type of thing. And so, yes, I've enjoyed um, being a part, and I'll have my books there, and then I'll have, you know, of course, um, you know, information about how to, how to reach me, how to find me. One thing that I have found really helpful are podcasts. And so, again, and you and I were speaking earlier, and I mentioned the fact that I. Um, have recently spoken to somebody in Australia and somebody in Belgium and somebody in Canada. And so what I love is that podcasts are evergreen. They can, you know, people can tap into you whenever. And so I, I just really have enjoyed being a part of that. And it makes it, it makes it accessible for me. I, I don't know that I would ever fly to Australia. Oh, I, no, I would absolutely fly to Australia. I don't know if that, I don't know if a speaking <laughs> engagement would bring me there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think that so I think that, you know, in some ways our world is opening up and expanding in so many, you know, with new Absolutely. platforms and new technologies. And so to be honest, podcasts has been, have been really very, very valuable to me. Now, are you referring to other people's podcasts or your podcast series? That is a great question. So right now it's other people's podcasts. Okay. And... I am looking to do my own. Good, um, yes, good. yes. So, um, and it's been good because by doing other people's podcasts, you, you find your voice, you get more comfortable, and you, you learn all the technology pieces. Which I'm still, I'm still a little nervous about doing my own um, because it's technology aspect. But yeah, so there's, um, you know, back to finding your niche, finding your genre, finding people that want to speak and talk about that. It gives you a great opportunity, and then and and they do often like to have reciprocal opportunities, and so yes, and by having mine, I'll be able to then host them in the future. Um, and uh, Wild Goose is going to be back again this summer. Are you planning to to attend? Or? I'm I'm still on the fence on that one. Yeah. I'm not sure. How about you? I'm yeah. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Um, I just found it to be such an amazing experience and yeah. such a good. I mean, you know, I, I hesitate to use the word networking because I mean, uh -huh. people think that, you know, that's kind of a, you know, a little bit negative a connotation. But I mean, I just thought it was so filled with people that I wanted to talk to. I was going to say, you know, when you're when you're around people with a similar heart, yeah. um, it just it, it just feels so incredibly different. You just leave lighter. It's yeah. just really invigorating. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't walk more than about 50 feet before I'd run into somebody else who, you know, I wanted, really wanted to talk to, you know, for one reason um, or another, you beautiful. know, so it's just like, yes. and, and when you have, you know, that many, like you said, that many like-minded people all in the same place for a compressed yeah. period of time and a compressed, you know, location, it's just really um, valuable in terms yeah. of, you know, building and fostering relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what about the future? Um, in, you know, again, in terms of books, we can talk about that yeah. first. Have yeah. you got any desire to do a follow-on to the first book or books on other subjects? Yeah. You know, one thing I did do was I created a um, group growth guide for the book because people were wanting to use it um, in a small group, doing small group work. So, for example, um, an AA group hmm. Hmm. wanted to do. And, and I, I loved that. I thought, you know, back to this is kind of the core of um, when I say this to the core, trauma often is the core of addictions and other things. And so, you know, them wanting to get at the root of it together is beautiful. And with with my background in, in psychology and my background with spiritual direction, I know how important it is to create safe space for others. I mean, for anyone who's trying to do this work. And so I thought it was really important to have a, a guide to help them do that, to know how to ground yourself, to know how to um, uh, allow people to speak as much as they want to speak and, and some higher level questions so they don't have to get into the nitty gritty. So anyway, that was my first thing, companion book, was to create this group growth guide. And then I'm very excited about the healing, how to heal our divides <laughs> coming out. I think that will be, uh, I just really hope that um, again, it just raises awareness of what we're seeking to do as an organization and um, 
and 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 my and the first book. So, so that that's that's that really the next launch. I was asked to write a collaborative book around forgiveness, and mm-hmm. so I did that. That was published back in December. So, I'm just really open to to what may come. I mean, like I said, so far. It's the, uh, my 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 author path has been very invitational, so I'm just kind of open to to what may come. Good, good. Well, I'm sure there'll be more opportunities that'll. I mean, that's one of the things that's so exciting. It's just like so much of the stuff is unexpected. Yes. You know, yeah. in terms of opportunities, it, you know, just by somebody used the term the other day of um, positioning yourself for possibility. Mm, yes. You know, which I thought was just such a great term because, uh, you know, everywhere I've turned, you know, there have been unexpected relationships and unexpected opportunities that I never would have predicted. So um, being out there and getting to know people and building relationships leads to wonderful things. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So, again, the title for Tamri's book is Awakening the Light, a Survivors to Thrivers Going Forward Story. And you can learn more about the book, about Tambry, about all her work and her organization at SurvivorsToThrivers.com. So, Tambry, thanks so much for spending some time with us and sharing. Thank you so much, Brian. It's been great talking with you. All right. Take care. Thanks again. Okay.